Welcome back to Brazen Brits. This week we have a special guest who is going to make us three simple cocktails you can make at campsite. It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. Oh, I wonder. Oh, I just wonder. So first, let me introduce you to Alex. Hi there, nice to meet you. Alex and I have known each other for a very long time. We were roommates back in like 1999, 2000, yeah. and we kind of went apart, did our own things, um, and so we figured out that we haven't seen each other for 18 years. Imagine with that old. We are that old. That's how you know when you're old, when you haven't seen someone for 18 years. So anyway, it just so happened that Alex watched one of our videos last week and realized that we were in Florida. He is also working in Florida, so that brings us to why he is qualified to make us three amazing cocktails. So Alex, what? Can you just remind everyone what you're doing? Okay, yes I can, Lawrence. Um, I work for a worldwide hotel company. I am a uh, bar manager in their luxury resorts. I also train their bar managers, assistants, bar people, and I consult on a variety of projects. And he has, I can confirm, he has extensive experience from the customer side of drinking as well. Um, I know my product. Yes, you certainly do, Alex. Taking yes. a lot of practice. So anyway, actually, we weren't going to do this video, and we were hanging out yesterday, and Alex made us some amazing cocktails yesterday evening. So I'm going to be honest, feeling very rough right now, which is why Alex is going to start off with, he's promised to make us the best hangover cure he's ever seen. So... Okay, well, thank you, you, Lawrence. Um, I'm going to make what I like to call a recovery vehicle, which is the one and only Michelada. This is a cocktail hailing from Mexico. Got lots of southern influence. And, you know, you might be put off when you see what's going in it. But I assure you, this is a game changer. This will make you feel life is great again. To put it in perspective, Alex has already told me what goes into this. And I can see the ingredients here. And I'm either going to... I'm, I'm going to throw up. That's what's going to happen here. So, but let's let's... What he means, of course, is metaphorically throw up. He'll be throwing up words of happiness. He's going to be throwing up good feeling and throwing up joy to everyone. Okay, do it. I still think this is a joke and you're just trying to make me throw up, but let's do it. <laughs> okay, well, let's put it to the test. Worst case scenario, we get to see Lawrence throw up. So, we're starting with... A glass, an essential part of every cocktail, because otherwise it's very difficult to drink. And, um, and we're going to do something which is called in the trade, rimming. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think you made that up as well, but okay. Sure. Yeah, no, we do actually call it rimming. Okay. Um, naturally, we require something everyone has, which is a knife. I will make a incision down the halfway part of the line. Lovely. I have, of course, washed my hands, very important. And I will make a 45 degree incision towards the center and very delicately will hold on the middle and make a second incision. And I'm gonna hold this line and I'm going to just run it around the edge of my glass. And that essentially is my glue for the salt which is gonna go on there. Obviously, it is a white plate, so it's fairly difficult to see this white pile of salt, but I can assure you it is there. You know, in the bar work, they say we need lots of tools, but you know, honestly, there's nothing you can't find around the house that you can't use to do what we do. Everything so, we're using today, apart from some of the stuff that Alex bought, I mean, ingredients Alex bought, is from our trailer. Exactly. I am gonna get my glass, I'm gonna hold it, and I'm just gonna roll it without touching the plate, just roll it into the salt. And you see how I'm rolling and pushing? And you will see that we have got a lovely rim. Of salt. Fancy. Isn't it just? You know, um, there are many different things you can do with the rimming technique. If you're making a sweet cocktail, you can get some uh, flavored syrup like Grundy, strawberry, and use sugar instead. And it gives you a way of making your cocktail look a little bit, little bit fancy pants, as it were. So, I'm gonna take another lime. I'm gonna give it a little squeeze in there. 
Look, in she goes. And then, gonna get my beer. My beer, I'm using Modelo, uh, which is a Mexican beer. It is absolutely fantastic, but you don't have to use this beer. If you wanna use a different one, just a classic lager, that is fine. So I am putting a bit of beer in there. Like I, said, I like to test my uh, my products, so still a good beer. So I've got some beer in there, and staying on a motoring theme, I have some V8 tomato juice just to put some peps in the motor, and I'm just going to pour this straight in there. Yep, that's right. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, what, tomato juice and beer? But honestly, work with me on this, guys. Got some peppercorns. Just two little shakes, perfect. Got some cilantro hot sauce. Just give us a little bit of spice. I don't want to go over the top of this. I'm going to put in a little bit of soy sauce. Da -da -da giving it a little bit of an oriental touch. Using my barbecue tongs, I'm gonna get some ice cubes. I know some people, you don't have to have ice cubes. Look, in she goes. And we're just gonna give it a little bit of a mix. When you mix in, put the spoon right to the bottom, lift it up, and if you want, you can turn the glass as well. And that, dear esteemed friends, is a Michelada. Cheers. Here he goes. My stomach is turning just looking at this. Honestly, this fine. is disgusting. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> that is. Uh -huh. I can't believe how good this tastes. Isn't it a fantastic uh, drink? This is really good. I, I know, I wasn't making it up. It really is a good drink. Can I try some? You have to come and try some of this. <laughs> yeah, no, it's nice. I like this stuff. Okay, <laughs> I want you to make me something with gin. Okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna make a gin and tonic. You might say, what's exciting about gin and tonic? Everyone knows a gin and tonic. This guy, what, he gets paid a wage to show people how to make a gin and tonic. You know I'm gonna make one, but not as you know it. Um, I could do it using a shaker, but because we're in this world, I haven't got a shaker. That is not gonna stop me, because I have one of these wonderfully American uh, water bottle things. And this, given it's got a lid that shuts, it can work as a shaker. So, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put in my gin, and I'm gonna measure out my gin. But how am I gonna measure my gin when I haven't got a jigger, which is a measuring tool? That is not gonna stop me. I'm gonna use an egg cup. Um, generally speaking, these egg cups, you will see. Da, da, da. One for egg cup is one measure for a drink. So it's nice and easy. In goes my top. I'm using Hendrix because it is a wonderful gin and not in the least bit aromatized. And I'm gonna put into my shaker some red fruits. I've got some beautiful strawberries and I'm gonna put two halves in my shaker. I'm equally gonna get some blueberries because you know I figured you get an RV going out to the countryside. You know, these are things that often they grow wild and they've got such intense flavor, you know, Let's push the boundaries. Let's use these. Some blackberries. Who doesn't like picking blackberries? Used to as a child and have crumble. It was fantastic. And of course, whoa, almost. Bit of lime. I'm not gonna squeeze the lime because I don't want to over dominate the flavor. And I'm gonna get my pitcher of ice. Put a little bit of ice in there. Close my shaker and give it a shake. See? Whew, okay, I have shook. And now. Can I just say, Natalie, our camera lady, started dancing when you were doing that. <laughs> you know what, it's strangely addictive. I, I, in my mind, I was dancing. You know, it's uh, social activity shaking. 
and it boosts your credibility. So I'm gonna put in my glass, I'm gonna pour it in, and you're gonna see how we've captured all of this beautiful color. Doesn't matter if the fruit goes in, because well, it's infused with gin. It's the best Please. bit. You know, it gives you something to eat afterwards. The dessert, if you will. I now could get my gin. I'm using a fever tree gin, slim line, because uh, I'm watching my weight, which is still there. And quite simply, I am gonna pour it in. Oh, I love that sound. They don't pour it in super quick, because if you do that, then it's gonna foam up and go over the side. And using my trusty spoon, just giving it a little stir, and there, a very simple to make, yet very visually exciting, a very summery gin and tonic. Look at that. Oh. And I will vouch that this is amazing. It's very simple, yet very amazing. When you check it's still good, Lawrence. When, when you've had about 15 of these in the last 12 hours, see if it's still good. Well, I was going for one for every year we've not seen each other, so we've still got another three to go. Uh, is it still good? Oh, it's still good, yeah. Back in the net. I don't quite think I can drink that. I'll no. drink it. Okay, fantastic. Drink. Well, the good news, Natalie, <laughs> yeah. is that obviously I've got something for you as well. Woohoo! Uh, which takes us on to our third drink, which is essentially, it's like a variation of a uh, dark and stormy. Um, I've just made some new lime wedges and what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my trusty uh, egg cup and I'm going to squeeze some juice into it, okay? This is going to require a little bit of lime and all will become clear why I'm doing what I'm doing. You can get uh, lime crushers that cost very little money from uh, the dollar store or wherever. And they're very practical in this instance. So what I've done, I've done just under half my egg cup with uh, lime juice. What I'm now gonna do, I'm gonna put in the same quantity of sugar into said egg cup. Thick. What kind of sugar, any sugar? Just no, obviously you're using normal white granulated sugar, is that um, okay? In this case, I'm using white granulated sugar because typically that's what everyone has. Okay. But um, if you really wanna push the boat out, Demerara sugar, the brown uh, granulated sugar, that would be the one to go for because it's got a little bit more flavor to it. So then, I have, as demonstrated, made a simple sweet and sour mix, which is 50% uh, lime juice, 50% sugar, which takes up half of the size of this egg cup. Okay, I'm gonna take this, I've been stirring it a little bit, so it's all nice and mixed, and in she goes. So already, if you had to go around the glass, you'll see there's a little sugary film that's there. This is very important. Okay. It's almost like a lime syrup. It is, it is. We call it um, a uh, simple sour mix or a mm -hmm. Sweden sour. There's many different names. I'm now going to get my rum. I'm going for a Ron de Capa, which is a fantastic rum. But equally, if you're looking to have, uh, if you're not looking to spend a lot of money on the alcohol, it doesn't have to be that. I'd recommend it being a dark rum. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's a good one. I'd recommend it being a. Um, a dark rum just because it's a little bit more perfumed. So I'm gonna take a little bit of ice. Okay. I am going to take another lime wedge and I'm gonna just wipe it around the rim. Why is this? It just means that when those people take a drink for the first time, it's got this nice citrus uh, burst that comes into your mouth. So it really opens up the taste buds. I've got some ginger beer. Again, I use Fever Tree. Again, using my uh, System Z of a lighter to open my bottle. And I'm just gonna pour, pour it in. Up it goes. Lovely. And I am going to take a stick of cinnamon. Using my barbecue cooking gas lighter thing, I am now going to try and make it work, here we go. And I am gonna burn my cinnamon, okay? It's, it gives us such a good smell, and that spiciness, in particular, it combines with the dark rum amazingly. And so it doesn't matter if you've got a little bit of charring happening, that's perfectly normal. If it catches fire a little bit, absolutely fine. 
In an ideal world, if you had one of those small gas blow torches that you use, you can use one of those. We it, do have one actually, we should have used that, and I know a lot of people do to start uh, the campfires, so... You know, Lawrence has got a saying about planning. Should have, uh, should have prepared better, I'm sorry, uh, okay. Alex. I've got some uh, smoke coming out, I'm just going to fire up the inside. It smells amazing, by the way. Doesn't it just... Reminds me of Christmas. Yeah. Oh, and I'm going to use this to stir my cocktail. Here we go. I'm giving it a stir, what's that doing? Not only is it mixing everything that was in there, so the sugar syrup, because the fact it's dense, it sits on the bottom, so you need to bring that up. But it's also waving through that nice cinnamon um, aroma throughout. It's waking up the rum. And then we just go put a little bit of decoration in there. Tuck, tuck. Because I don't like wasting stuff. So, you know, I'm gonna put a couple of blackberries in there. Tuck, tuck. And, of course, a strawberry. The strawberry, I'm gonna go a little bit fancy because I can. I'm going to make a small incision, lovely, and then I'm just going to place it on the side of the glass. And there, my friends, is a slightly alternative dark and stormy for your pleasure. Lawrence, if you'd like to do the honours. I love that cinnamon trick. The cinnamon trick is amazing. I'm gonna do that in everything now. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't do it in your mushroom soup. But oh, it's so smooth. Amazing. Yeah. Lots of flavors, lots of ambition. Natalie's a rum drinker. I used to be, but Natalie's a rum drinker, but I would drink this all day. For sure. uh, I've tried. Um, I might not recommend we drink it all day because <laughs> the next day you'll yeah. need lots of tomato juice. Which is what we did others. yesterday. Thank you, Alex, yes. Yeah, that is true, yeah. Well, that was amazing, so thank you very much. Um, if you like this, please hit like, subscribe. If you hit the bell button, you get notifications when we upload a new video. We are going to leave all of the ingredients and instructions on how to make the three drinks in the description to below, so go and check that out. Um, anything else to say, Alex? Except that it's been an absolute pleasure being here, helping out making some RCs for your RVs. That would be recreational cocktails. And, um, and yeah, I hope to come back soon uh, to maybe do some more. Yep. So thank you very much. Thank you, Natalie, yep. Lawrence, and should we try some more cocktails? Woohoo! Fine, let's go. Okay, cool. All right. All right. See you next week, guys. See you.